Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Camila Aganzuki, and I am a senior at Smith College, uh, majoring in education and child study, as well as Italian studies. Hi, I'm Leah Christman. Um, I'm also a senior at Smith, and I study psychology, and I also study um, Italian studies. And today we're going to be talking about our experience with the Italian language, um, and also, m well, more specifically, the, um, the internship that we both did in a preschool in um, Pistoia, Italy. So I'm going to turn it over to Camilla first. Um, so throughout my college career, I've studied multiple languages, including Italian, German, and Spanish. But my decision to concentrate solely on Italian uh, was more of a personal one that I'm very happy I followed through with. Uh, my mother was born in Milan, Italy in the 70s, and her parents came to the US not knowing any English, um, and, and she also came um, <laughs> uh, in the 80s, and I've stayed in the US ever since. Um, and I was born and raised in Washington, DC, and I've been there my whole life. Um, and growing up in DC, I almost always spoke in English, but my parents forced me to speak in Italian with my mother so that I would learn the language. Um, and though I never really felt like an Italian myself, um, I thought that my Italian was, Italian was really good, but it wasn't until the few times that I would go to Italy um, to visit extended family that I realized my Italian was actually really bad. Um, <laughs> no one could understand me and I could not communicate with others. Um, and so, um, uh, sorry. So I was kind of embarrassed about how bad my Italian was. Um, but in DC, besides speaking with my mother, um, whose English had become better than her Italian, I didn't really have any op other opportunities to learn um, Italian in a former manner, and I didn't really have any experiences with the Italian culture. Um, so when I came to Smith, I took advantage of the native Italian professors and their courses, and I decided I would buckle down and truly learn um, Italian. <laughs> Uh, I started with an accelerated elementary course, which wasn't the most strenuous, but um, it really allowed me to learn the grammar and gain fluency in, in Italian literacy, which is something that I had never been exposed to. Um, but studying in, in uh, Italian at Smith, for me, wasn't just about learning the culture. It was also about um, creating or using it as a bridge that would connect myself to my mother's um, homeland as well as um, a bridge to strengthen my Italian identity. Um, so to take my Italian studies further, uh, I decided to apply to the Smith year-long study abroad in um, Florence, which was another opportunity that would allow me to be fully immersed in the Italian language as well as the Italian culture. Um, I also knew the program would be especially rewarding because it offers an internship for students um, interested in early child education, such as myself, in a town near Florence called Pistoia. Um, and that also provided me a lot more um, experience speaking with native Italians, including um, children. Um, and I did a lot of um, observations in that internship in um, early childhood classes and speaking Italian allowed me to understand and process my observations at a much deeper level um, during the internship. Um, so my experience with the language a little bit different than Camilla's in that I hadn't had pretty much any exposure to Italian before Smith. Um, in high school I took um, French and I took some Spanish and when I got to Smith um, I continued with the French but by the end of my um, the first semester of my um, first year I wanted to add another language on top of that um, and my reason for speaking Italian was very circumstantial um, uh, for one there are not many languages that you can start at a very basic level um, in the second semester in the spring semester um, and for another I had across from me um, lived a senior who um, had just come back from her um, her year abroad in Florence and she made it sound incredible um, and she throughout the span of a semester was very patiently but persistently pushing me towards trying Italian um, and I realized that's not a very auspicious start but um, on the other hand it doesn't really matter because um, after, um, over the span of three years, it's become a language that I feel very connected to um, and that even to this day, I still um, am trying to figure out all of the nuances of. Um, and 
And um, so Camille and I and all the other Smith students who went abroad for a year in Florence, we were given many opportunities to go deeper into the culture. We had, we had host families and um, they introduced us to university students and we went to festivals and we went to concerts. Um, but I am particularly grateful for the time that I spent each week um, over last year um, in an Italian preschool um, because it, the language of young children is so different from the young language of adults and you feel that all the more um, when their language is not your own language. Um, and so I was in a class with of four-year-olds, um, about 24-year-olds, and in the beginning I was this mute fly on the wall because um, I was not saying, saying very much because I didn't understand very much and they were not saying very much to me because they didn't understand why I was there. Um, but after a while, uh, because I looked like an adult, but I talked like a four-year-old in Italian, um, they accepted me into the world as not into their world, not as um, not quite as a student, not like as a peer, but not quite as a teacher either. Um, so I can credit those four-year-olds for some very early and important leaps in my comprehension. Um, for for instance, they taught me um, a very like a base, simple vocabulary for love because they would tell me um, who they had crushes on and who had crushes on them, um, and 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 also words for feelings like disappointment um, and jealousy and wanting, um, and all of the possible permutations for. Um, the phrase, when is lunch, or like, I am hungry now. Um, but what hit me most of all um, was the linguistic transition that some of these kids were going through themselves. Um, now, Pistoia is a, a small to medium-sized city. It's about the size of Lowell or of Cambridge. Um, and um, it, it's kind of a microcosm for what's happening more widely in Italy. Uh, in the classroom that I was in, um, I was surprised to learn that over half the students their parents spoke a different language at home. So half the students of the class, uh, more, more than half, sorry, more than half had parents who were from um, Albania, Romania, Morocco, Nigeria, um, Russia, and um, Japan. And one of the teachers told me that when they entered into um, pre the preschool as two and three year olds, they would only like solely use hand gestures to convey what they wanted or needed because this was the first time that they were being exposed to the dominant language of the country that they were raised in. Um, and um, as four year olds, by the time I met them, they were completely comfortable in Italian. Um, and one of their favorite games during lunch um, would be to point at an object, you know, let's say like bread, and say, well, in my home, we call bread such and such. And then, you know, another kid will be like, well, in my home, we call it such and such. And, and so on and so forth. And these kids, the ones that, um, th that had, um, had gone through this, I found were the ones who were especially patient with me when I didn't understand what they were saying or they didn't understand what I was saying in Italian. Um, because there's, you know, there's something very vulnerable about not being able to express exactly what you want to in a foreign language, but it's also a very hopeful process because maybe now you don't understand or you can't say exactly what you mean, but, but soon you will. And um, so you know, maybe you, you only knew Albanian when you started school and you couldn't even say you were hungry, but now here you are absolutely schooling an American college student on basic Italian grammar. Um, so I don't know uh, if I will have a career one day that will allow me to use Italian on a daily basis, um, but learning the language, and especially learning it from young children, has been an asset to me. And also learning the culture um, alongside the language has been an absolute pleasure. Um, so next year I'm going to be an English teacher working with primary, age school, primary school aged children in Malta, thanks to a Fulbright. Um, and I owe those preschool students for not only giving me enough experience for young children to feel confident enough to even apply for a Fulbright, but also for teaching me about like, the nature of language itself and being confident in the face of unfamiliarity. Um, so Camille is going to talk about her future. Um, I mean, as I continue forward in my <laughs> career as an educator, I really hope or look forward to applying the Pistoia approach to my teaching practices in the U.S. And I also hope to continue to use Italian as a bridge to connect um, and exchange ideas with other Italian educators. And overall, um, my experience in Italy opened up doors to the outside of the U.S. as well as to my own culture and family. Um, and we'd like to thank the Italian department and especially Giovanna Valesia um, for supporting us in this. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>